Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Let us continue our discussion with solutions to model question paper for the subject VLSI design and testing. Let us move on to the next question. This question is from module 3. Make use of necessary circuit diagram explain the operation of 3 transistor DRAM cell. So the question is on DRAM. We need to explain the 3 transistor based DRAM cell. So here is the circuit. In this circuit you can see there is a NMOS depletion transistor which will be worked as work as pull up transistor. In the pull down we will be having 3 transistor T1, T2 and 3, T3. These 3 transistors are responsible for storing the data and to retrieve the data. This bus is the output signal of this CMOS network. This bus will carry the data which we want to write or read. And here T1, T2, T3 are connected in such a way that T1 gate will be connected to write signal and T3 will be connected to read signal. And T2 gate is connected to the output of this T1 transistor where the gate capacitance of T2 will hold the charge. Means the memory storage device here is basically T2. Now let us understand the write operation. In this case what we need to do, this WR corresponds to write control signal and RD corresponds to read control signal. In the write operation, this WR need to be make 1 and RD make RD to be 0. Uh, when RD is equal to 1, we can read the data. When WR is equal to 1, we can write the data. Now we are making this WR is equal to 1. Means it will be turning on the transistor T1. At the time, RD should be 0. So that T3 will be off. And the value present in bus is the bit we are supposed to write. This bit will be taken into T2 through T1. Remember we have made WR is equal to 1. It is turning on the uh, transistor T1. Whatever the data present in bus will pass to the gate of T2. Now T2 gate capacitance will be charged. And that will be the data which is going to store over here. This is the right operation. And later we are making WR is also 0 and RD is equal to 0. In that case what happens? There is no connect direct connection established for T2 in any manner. So T2 will hold the charge. Let us understand the read operation now. So now in the read operation what happens? WR will be kept 0 and RD will be kept is equal to 1. Means we are making read. That's why RD is equal to 1. And remember we have stored in the gate capacitance of T2. That is the value 1. Means T2 will be on now. Because of RD is equal to 1, T3 is also 1. So in this case what happens, this bus will be getting a direct connection established for a ground signal. So that's why, that's why bus will be pulled to 0. Means we have stored 1 over here. That's why T2 is on and T3 is on because we are reading the data and bus will be getting direct connection to ground and bus will be pulled to 0. If we get 0 from the bus, 0 at the bus, it means we are reading 1. It is reverse. Similarly, if 0 is stored over here and we are trying to read the data, what happens? RD is 1, T3 is on and if 0 is stored, T2 will be off. Means bus will not get the direct connection to ground. In, because of that, bus will be having some positive value. Because of the some positive value present in the bus, sense amplifier will detect that and it will treat that as logic 1. This is how the write and read operation can be done using 3 transistors in a DRAM cell. The next one is SRAM cell. The question will be on a working of operation of a full CMOS SRAM cell with necessary topology. Here for CMOS cell, you can write 4 transistor cell also and you can write 6 transistor cell also. Better to write both but here I have given only 6 transistor cell. 4 transistor cell also looks similar. You can understand this and go back and learn 4 transistor cell if you want. Here we have 2 bit lines. You can see bit and bit bar. If bit is equal to 1, bit bar will be 0, something like that. And we have a word line horizontally. And here we have 6 transistors. These 6 transistors are uh, required to store the, uh, store the data. In 6 transistors, this P1, D1 making one inverter and P2, D2 making another inverter. And the input of P1, D1 inverter will be connected to the output of P2, D2. And the output of P1, D1 will be connected to the input of P2, D2. It means if we have a output of P1, D1 inverter Q is equal to 0, it means the output of the second inverter will be 1. If this is 1, this will be 0, something like that. So let us understand the read operation. 
before going to the read operation we need to assume that q will be 0 and q bar is 1 means whatever the value of q that is what the value we have stored now 0 is the value present we need to read that so bit is equal to 1 bit bar is equal to 1 we need to set first means these two uh, vertical lines the columns will be having 1 and word line need to be make 1 the next step when word line is equal to 1 it is giving the voltage to the gate of a1 and a2 it will make a1 and a2 transistor turn on when a1 and a2 turned on because of this q will be having 0 the inverter input will be having 1 means q is equal to 0 means the inverter input is 1 that's why it is getting 0 and also you can assume that q bar will be having the reverse value 1 that will make this inverter input 1 and because of that one d1 is on now the thing is q is 0 and d1 is on a1 is on will be having 1 at the bit line this one will be passed through a1 and it will pass through d1 and it will be connected to ground what it says it says bit line is discharging its value to 0 means we have precharged this bit one bit value to 1 now after the reading operation bit will be going to 0 but bit bar b means bit bar will be at 1 itself it says we are reading the data 0 suppose this suppose if this q is equal to 1 a q is equal to 1 in the sense we have stored the value 1 and we are reading now again we need to precharge this to uh, 1 bit is equal to 1 and bit bar is equal to 1 again word line will be 1 again a1 and a2 turns on now the thing is q is equal to 1 and q bar b will be 0 we need to read that and because of a2 is equal to 1 a1 is equal to 1 these two transistors are turned on there is a discharge path for bit underscore b through a2 d2 and ground there is no discharge path for bit line since d1 is off q will be 1 and the input of this inverter will be 0 p1 transistor will be on d1 is off so there is no discharge path over here it means bit will be stored in the bit will be in the same value precharged to high it means we are reading the value 1 coming to the right operation it is also a similar case but the thing is whatever the value we are writing into the ram need to be passed from bit and obviously bit bar will be reversed to that if we are writing 1 bit will be 1 and bit bar will be 0 and then we need to turn on this word line and a1 will be on a2 will be on because of bit is equal to 1 this data will be available for q this q is equal to 1 now means we are storing 1 because of that q is equal to 1 and we are connected that to the input of the second inverter this inverter output will be 0 and obviously bit b is giving 0 only and this value will be stored over here since q is always 1 q bar will be always 0 since the two inverters are connected in such fashion so one will be stored over here continuously this is what the right operation is and with this we will be having some sort of transistor sizes we need to keep like in order to in order for q to not flip d1 should be stronger than a1 means d1 transistor here should be stronger than the a1 transistor and a1 should be uh, stronger than the p1 transistor so these are the things we need to maintain to get the exact value and also you can write the sense amplifier with this you can see the in this figure the top one is again the 60 ram what we have what i have explained here but the below one is the sense amplifier this sense amplifier can also be explained here the explanation is given since it is asked for the 10 marks then we have a choice question in module 3 that is question number 6 explain the operation of 4 cross 4 nand based rom array with necessary circuit diagram this is the necessary circuit diagram for a 4 cross 4 NAND based ROM here since it is 4 cross 4 we need to have 4 rows and 4 columns R1, R2, R3, R4 corresponding row values C1, C2, C3, C4 corresponding to column values here column values are going to be set depending on the row values here the thing is the pull up transistors are NMOS depletion type transistors it means if the pull down transistor is off the output will be set to 1 since always this depletion transistor is on 
and if the transistor in the pull down network is having input 1 to the gate there is a chance of making the output to go low that is the basic idea here r1 r2 r3 values are going to be given like this accordingly c1 c2 c3 c4 it is going to generate suppose r1 is equal to 0 what happens this transistor will be off and this transistor will be off so if this transistor is off in the sense in the second c2 we can see this transistor is already off r1 is on this transistor is on even if this transistor is on because of r1 is having 0 the c2 will be set to high value so that is how this logic works depending on r1 we need to see what is the other transistor which is responsible for c2 in the first case while setting c1 only r3 matters and if you see the c2 how it is generating because of r1 and r4 if r1 is 0 and r4 is 0 then only c2 will be high otherwise it is 0 similarly c3 when it is going to set when r2 is equal to 0 and r4 is equal to 0 um, it will set if r2 is 1 and r4 is 1 c3 will come to 0 that is how the c1 c2 c3 c4 values are generated here depending on r1 r2 r3 r4 values this is about 4 cross 4 nand based rom and if you want more explanation related to this, you can visit the prescribed textbook in your syllabus that is CMOS Digital Integrated Circuit Analysis and Design, you will get more information. Then we have a next question with necessary circuit diagram explain the operation of NOR flash memory cell with bias conditions. This is the simple NOR flash memory cell, the bias conditions and the configurations of NOR cell is given over here in the table. The different kind of operations we are going to do for a flash memory is that we can erase the memory, we can program the memory means we can write into the flash and we can read the data. At that time these you can see in the diagram bit line 1, bit line 2 are there. Similarly we have a source line and then we have three word lines. Since it is uh, three rows that is why three lines. Word line 1, word line 2, word line 3. Considering this transistor is the one cell which we have taken for write or read. These are the different values we are supposed to give from the lines. Bit line 1, bit line 2, source line, word line, word line 2, word line 3. So this is the uh, simple explanation which I am giving here. You need to write this as well as this. And for the more explanation you need to again refer to this book. Erase, programming and read we can do. And while erasing we need to provide the highest voltage from the source line. It is connected over here. And while programming, we need to give the voltages like this. And while reading the data from the bit line, we are supposed to provide the voltages like this. And for the more information of different biasing methods and the voltage levels and what are all those conventions, you can read this. Here the voltage levels, what is VCC, VSS, chip select, write enable um, and output enable and other read operation and write operation, erase operations are going to be done and some production mechanisms are given here and then explain the hysteresis characteristics of a ferroelectric capacitor with necessary diagram. The ferroelectric uh, RAM that is random access memory here they have asked to write the characteristics it means hysteresis characteristic uh, says how the polarization of that material changes with respect to the electric field. You can see here in the x-axis we will be having a applied voltage and in y-axis we will be having a polarization and these points indicating QS, QR are the different values of the charge and polarization will be increased when the electric field increases from zero uh, and polarization will be remain constant when it is at the certain point and polarization will be decreased as the electric field decreases. That is how the polarization and the electric field will be dependent on dependent here with respect to the ferroelectric capacitor is concerned and also again for the more information you need to refer third or fourth edition of that prescribed test book so that you will get more information about this and this is about module 3 questions and module 4 questions let us answer in the next video thank you